All right, good evening. How's everybody doing? Yeah. You guys doing okay? Yeah. All right. I'm glad you guys are here. Welcome. Happy Father's Day to you dads out there. Congratulations. <laughs> Listen, you guys are, uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, I'm sure you've been told time and time today how amazing you are, so I'll just echo that from your children. Uh, you're doing an amazing job, and just thank you uh, for what you're doing, for the sacrifices that you're making, for the struggle that you're enduring every day that you leave home to go to work to provide for your family and all the sacrifices that you make to make sure that they have a roof over their head and clothes on them and food. Man, thank you for what you're doing. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep, keep pushing your children toward God. Keep directing their focus to the things of God and to eternal things. And listen, the Bible says that when they grow older, they won't depart. They'll stay with it. And listen, they'll teach their children and their children will teach their children and we'll have generations reoccurring, re coming back, generations of the young men and women who will love God and who will stand up for the things of God. And we look around right now and it's not a very good sight out there. And so it's up to us, church, it's up to us dads and, and moms out there to, uh, to raise our children to love God, to respect authority, and to live... Uh, as if there are uh, things to live for. And we're going to talk about today, we're in a, we're in a, in a series right now on, on the, the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And, and what, we, uh, what we found out or discovered last week is that a lot of us, you know, when we think about the kingdom of heaven, we think about heaven. And we think about that place that one day we're going to be able to go to. And when we, when we pass from this earth, we're going, to, we're going to go to heaven and we're going to enjoy all eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Well, yes, that's true, but that's only, that's only half true. The, the other part is, is that, yes, the kingdom of heaven exists for all eternity in heaven, but it also exists now. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is, is in your midst. It's, it's among you. It's, it's right here in your presence. And so we have the kingdom of heaven right here and right now. And listen, as, as, kingdom, as kingdom priests, it's our job, yours and mine, to rule and reign in this life through righteousness and in peace and in love through Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible told us last week, that as Christians, our, we're, to, we're to reign. We're to reign and rule. We're to take our position and reign as believers here on earth. And we're to show this world what righteousness looks like. We're to show this world what peace looks like and what love looks like and enjoy all the fruits of the Spirit. We're to, we're to show this world what those things look like. And we're to reign and rule in those things through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us the power and the ability and the strength to be able to live life different than the way we see life being lived right now. And today we're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to kind of start diving in on what it looks like to be a believer in the kingdom of heaven now, first of all, we got to discover how much value do we put into it? How much value is the kingdom of heaven in your life? Where does it stand? Where does it rate? If you were to, to make a list of your top five values of your life, where's the kingdom of heaven? Is it on there? And we look around and we see what's going on in this world and you say, hey, what do people value? I have no idea. I have no idea what people value. But I can sure show you and tell you a lot of things of what people don't value. They don't value life. They don't value people's freedoms. They don't value people's property. They don't value anybody. They don't value their neighbors. There's a lot of things out there that people are showing us that they don't value. I think it's time we need to start trying to identify what is it that we do value? What do we value? Because that's going to determine how we live our life. How we live out the rest of our days. See, some people look at the kingdom of heaven and they look at it kind of like a bus ticket. You know, they, they get their bus ticket and they just kind of wait around and, and, and they don't have to do anything because they, they know they have their, their ticket and and soon the time is going to come when it's time for them to redeem their ticket and they're going to go and ride on the bus. 
And some people view the kingdom of heaven that way. I, I'm saved. I, I, I did that. I'm just going to wait around now, you know, my next 20, 30, 40 years. And I'll turn in my, my kingdom ticket when it's time and I'll, I'll go up there and, and spend eternity. And that's how a lot of people, that's how a lot of people view the kingdom of heaven. But for, other, for others, the kingdom of heaven is a great treasure in their life. And it has tremendous value. In fact, it has so much value that they're willing to make sacrifices for it. They're willing to put things on the line. They're willing to put their own life on the line for the kingdom of heaven because that's how much they value it. It's number one on their list. It's the thing that they value more than anything else in life is the kingdom of heaven. That's how somebody can, can be thrown in prison for 10 years. All because all they wanted was the Bible. It's all they wanted. But they have so much value on the kingdom of heaven that that's a, man, that's, that's a no-brainer for them. But for the rest of us, where's, where's our value? Where do we value the kingdom of heaven? Where do we put it on our list? When we see the true value of the kingdom of heaven, we will be willing to give up our old lives in order to pursue it. If we had any idea the value of the kingdom of heaven, we would be willing to give up our old lives to pursue it. The Bible says that when we entered into the kingdom of heaven through salvation in Christ alone, we became a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Listen to me, it's the value that we place on our salvation that keeps the old away. If your salvation, if you don't value your salvation, listen to me, that new is not going to stay around very long. That old is going to creep back in. All because you don't value your salvation. You don't value what God has done for your life. You don't value the fact that, hey, I once was lost. Now I'm found. I'm saved. I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That now becomes number one priority in my life. That's the highest value that I can place on anything in my life. And when it's number one, old things stay away. The new things can stick around and they remain. Listen, before Christ, we valued earthly things. Why? Well, because we, we wanted to make a lot of money. We wanted to, to buy the house. We wanted to buy the car. We wanted to buy uh, whatever we wanted. We wanted to be able to buy that. We wanted to have a good life. We wanted to have a good life now. We wanted to have a good life today. For what? We want comfort. We want acceptance. We want prestige. We want all of those things that come with having a good life now and having a good life today. We, we valued being looked at a certain way. We dress a certain way. We act a certain way. We talk a certain way. We hold a cup a certain way. We, we do things a certain way because of the perception that we want to give off to other people because that's what we value. We value what other people care about us. We value... Uh, how much money we can make. We valued all of these things. But after Christ, hopefully those things went away and some other values entered in. Values like not making money, but making an impact. It's not bad to make money. Make it. Make a lot of it. Make all that you can. But I'm saying remove the value on the money. And place it somewhere else. Instead of making the money, make an impact. Instead of buying the house and the car and anything else we want, be a blessing to other people. Use your wealth and use those things that you valued before Christ now to come in and say, hey, I'm going to advance the kingdom with these things because that's where my value is. Instead of wanting comfort and acceptance and prestige, let's sacrifice. Let's sacrifice our comfort and our acceptance and our prestige to advance the kingdom. To advance the kingdom. So today I, wanna, I want us to look at some, uh, some examples of where some people have placed a, a high value on the kingdom of heaven. 
And some people have placed a not so high value on the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to look at those examples and we're going to kind of see the result of what happened. So uh, a, man named, a man named David Gonzalez. He was a, or he is a, uh, he works in the construction field, remodeling homes. And uh, not long ago, he, he stumbled upon a fixer-upper that he purchased. He, he's way up north somewhere. And uh, he began to go in and, and, and destroy, demo, demo day. He, he, he went in and began to, to demolish the, uh, the fixer-upper so that he could fix it up. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. But uh, he began tearing the walls apart. And up north, uh, back in the day, this, was, this, this, this home was built way back in the, in the 30s. And so uh, for insulation, they would use newspapers and periodicals and other things like that. And so as he was tearing the walls apart, out would come all these newspapers and all these periodicals that they would use for insulation to try to keep the house warm. Well, out comes this uh, comic book. All right, this is a, and, and this comic book is a, is a 1938, and it, and it said it's the, uh, it's uh, Action Comics uh, number one book. 1938 Action Comics number one book. And uh, it was in very good condition, and he thought right off the bat, he says, man, this is worth something. This is, this is something that, that's valuable. And what he later found out is that on the cover, it just so happened to be Superman's debut. Superman's debut on the comic book. And so, uh, as you can imagine, well, probably the value probably even went higher than that. Well, sure enough, uh, I don't know what the, what the comic book sold for back in 1938, but it made a pretty good piece of insulation. Well, he put it out on the auction block, and it brought in over $100,000. $100,000 for this comic book. I would say that uh, that was a pretty, pretty high value on a comic book. You know, value is just anything somebody's willing to, to give for it. And somebody felt like it was valuable enough to be worth $100,000. Talk about value. Well, let's, uh, let's look uh, at a couple of stories in Scripture. You guys remember uh, the story of Jacob and, and Rachel and Leah and... And, uh, and that whole story in Genesis 29. So, so Jacob, you know, he, he steals the uh, blessing from his brother Esau. And uh, Esau doesn't like that. He gets a little bit upset about that. And so uh, Jacob, man, he just bolts out of town. He just, he just gets lost. He thinks, hey, if I stay away long enough, maybe Esau will forget about it. Maybe he'll forgive me. Maybe we can one day be brothers again. Well, he bolts out of town and... And Bible says he starts, uh, he starts walking uh, through the eastern country. And he stumbles upon this, uh, this girl that just catches his attention, just, just knocks him right off his feet. Most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. Named Rachel. And so Rachel's got a pretty high... You know, Jacob's value of Rachel is, is up there. You know, it's, it's number one. He, he wants this girl. And so... Uh, he goes and, and finds out that, hey, they're actually part of the same family. Who knew? And so uh, he comes in to Uncle Laban and starts uh, telling Laban, hey, um, I'm, I'm here to help you if, you if you need some help, you know, here on the farm. And Laban's like, absolutely. He says, what do you want your wages to be? And, and Jacob says, I want, I want Rachel. I'll work for you for nothing if you'll just give me Rachel. I just, I just want Rachel. All right, that's, hey, let, let's make a deal. I'll tell you what, how about you work seven years for me, and at the end of seven years, I'll, I'll give you Rachel. Hey, man, no problem. I'll, I'll do that. She's, she's that valuable to me. So that's what happens, you know, and, and Jacob works for the seven years, and the Bible even says, hey, it, it only felt like a couple of days to Jacob. I mean, that's how much he loved her and how much he couldn't wait to, to have her as his, as his wife. And so seven years, man, that was nothing. And it's time. Seven years is up and it's time for him and Rachel to go on their honeymoon and, and live happily ever after. And so Laban gets everybody together. They're about to have a big celebration. And the only problem is, is that Rachel doesn't show up. Leah does. All right, the, other, the oldest daughter. And Laban's like, you know what? It's not right 
for the younger daughter to, to be given away in marriage first. You, you gotta have you gotta have Leah. And, but I'll give you her her maidservant as well. Two for the price of one. You know, here you go. But that's not what Jacob wanted. That's not who he wanted. She didn't catch his attention. She she wasn't uh, attracted to him. She, there was no. He didn't want her. So Jacob's like, man, I want Rachel. What do I have to do to get Rachel? Because that's where her value, that's where the value that he put on Rachel was way up there. She was valuable. Laban's like, hey, I, how about another seven years? You work for me for another seven years? I'll give you Rachel. Hey, no problem. So he goes and he works for Laban for another seven years. And finally, when that seven years is up, Laban gives him Rachel. But you can see that his value system, you can see where it was for Rachel. It was very high. It was so high that he was willing to work 14 years for this girl. Give up 14 years of his life so that he could spend the rest of his life with this girl. That's where his value system was. Well, let's go to another story. Let's talk about the rich young ruler in Mark chapter 10. You, you, he's a, this is a familiar story. We talked about the rich young, young ruler uh, many times. Uh, he comes to Jesus. He's running. He's praying to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, how do I have eternal life? How, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus makes it very simple. Hey, keep the commandments. Just go down through there and keep the commandments. He said, hey, look, done. I did that. Check. And this is what Jesus said. He said, you lack one thing. You lack one thing. It's where you value me. You lack this one thing. He says, go. Sell all you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. You see, where he messed up is he didn't place too high of a value on the kingdom of heaven. He didn't. See, Jesus wasn't up there on this rich young ruler's uh, page like, like Rachel was on Jacob's. But she was way up there. You see, Jesus to this rich young ruler, he, he wasn't up there. He didn't value Jesus. He was down, 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 down the list. In fact, it says he... He kind of bowed his head. He was sad. He, he kind of he turned around and, and he walked off. He wasn't willing to place a value above his possessions on Jesus. His possessions were too valuable. The things in his life were too valuable. He had no problem keeping the commitment. No problem being a good person. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of people out there that, that don't steal, that, that, that don't covet, that that, that don't murder. That there's, there's a ton of good people out there. But when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to making Him the most important, valuable uh, person in your life, it's got to it's got to go above your possessions. It's got to go above your life. And the rich young ruler, he he wasn't willing to make that sacrifice because that's what it is. It's a it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. In fact, the Bible says. Live, as a, live your life as a living sacrifice. You've got you to be able to sacrifice some of these things if you're going to have Jesus, if you're going to make Him number one on your valuation list. Let's, let's look at a, a couple of, of quotes here. This, this is our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. He says, I believe the Bible is the best gift that God has ever given to man. All the good from the Savior of the world is communicated to us through this book. I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. I would say he placed a pretty high value on God's Word, on, on the Bible. He said, look, when I, when I don't have anywhere else to go, sometimes I find myself on my knees in this book. That's, that's how high of a value he's placed on it. Listen to me. What you value, what you value determines 
what you will turn to when you have nowhere else to go. What you value determines who you're going to turn to or what you're going to turn to when you have nowhere else to go in this life. So thinking about your life, who do you turn to? What, what do you turn to when, when, when the chips are down, man, when, when, when you don't have anywhere else to go in your life? Uh, some of us, uh, uh, we, we might turn to work. You know, some of us might uh, consider ourselves a workaholic because we turn to work when everything else around us is not going well. Or, or some of us like to live by feelings and emotions, and so we, we turn to those things that make us feel good and make our emotions rise up and get us out of the dump that we're in. And so, so we go after those things, whatever that is, shopping, some of us may like to shop when everything else around us is, is going down. And, uh, some, some, we've been watching a lot of hoarders and some people just, they just, when they don't know what else to do, they just, they just start hoarding things and keeping things and, and just things like that. And so where do you turn to? Who do you turn to? Whatever you value, that's what you're going to turn to. The rich young ruler, he valued his possessions and that's what he turned to. That's what he, that's what he kept. Jesus, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go with my possessions. Or Jacob, hey, I'll stay here for another seven years if I have to to get Rachel. What you value determines how you're going to live your life. Determines the decisions that you're going to make in your life. And Abraham, he, he reminds us to, to keep the Bible at a very high priority in our life because it can help us in every situation. When we have nowhere else to turn, we can turn to the Scriptures and the Scriptures will give us comfort. The Scriptures will give us uh, guidance and direction. It'll, it'll increase our faith. It'll help us in our, in our time of trouble when we have nowhere else to go. John Wesley, he said this, I want to know one thing. That's the way to heaven. And God Himself has condescended to teach the way. He hath written it down in a book. He said, oh, give me that book. He said, at any price, give me the book of God. At any price. I almost named this sermon at any price because what's the price that you're willing to give to value God number one in your life. To value the kingdom of heaven over everything else in your life. Are you willing to pay any price? Are you willing to, to be like John Wesley said, any price, give me the scriptures. I'll go to prison for 10 more years. Just give me the book. Where is it on your list? Give me the book. There's a song. I just, just now thinking about this. There's a song that says, you know, you, you can have all this world. You can have everything in this world. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Because that's where he's at on my evaluation list. He's number one. I don't care what else. You, you can have it. That, that business that you burned, you can have it. You can have it. You can have all this, the things of this world. You can have it. Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. Let's look at a couple of uh, sad scriptures. Isaiah 53 um, talks about Jesus and, and the way he was treated and even though the way he was treated the way that he was, he still valued us. But listen to me. You're, you're, not, you're number one. Did you know you're number one on God's valuation list? You're number one. You are number one. Listen, listen to this. Isaiah 53. Starting in verse 3. Jesus, he, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised. Listen to me. 
And we didn't value him. He wasn't number one. He wasn't number two. He wasn't number three. He might have been number 20. But we didn't value him. I mean, he says he, did, he didn't have an impressive form. He, he, uh, he, he, or majesty that we should look at him. No appearance that we should desire him. Well, why value him? I value him. Well, here's why we should value him. Verse 4 says, Yet he himself bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains, but we in turn regarded him stricken. Struck down by God and afflicted, but he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punishment for our peace, was on Him, and we are healed by His wounds. Because we are number one on His value system. He values you more than anything else in this world. He didn't die for the plants. He didn't die for the birds. He didn't die for the fish. He died for you. For us. Us who had no value of Him. He didn't look like anybody that we should value. I don't either. We all went astray like sheep. We all have turned to our own way. And the Lord has punished Him for our iniquity. He's like, man, I, I won't go through this anyway because of the value that I've placed on them. Even if they don't, even if they don't value me, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to make this sacrifice. Philippians chapter 3. Let's talk about Paul for just a second. He says this. He says, I consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Where do you think he put Jesus on his valuation system? <laughs> I'd say number one. He said, hey, I consider everything else to be lost. Y'all know who Paul is, right? Paul, he's up there, man. He's anybody who's anybody. That's Paul. Hebrew of Hebrews. He's a Roman citizen. He's a Pharisee, one of the top Pharisees that there was. And listen to me. He says, I had it. And think about this. He's in prison. He's in prison. He said, listen, I, 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 will, I will lose everything. Everything's lost. Even the freedom that I have of being a Pharisee, of being a Hebrew, of being a Roman citizen, the freedom that comes with that, I consider that loss. I'd rather be here in prison. I'd rather be here in prison and have Jesus my number one value than to be out there a free man and have everything that I need and, have, and not value Him at all. He says, I consider everything to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Listen to me. Freedom is dangerous. Freedom is dangerous when it becomes valuable to us. When it, as believers, as Christians, listen to me. If, if being free is your number one value, you, listen, you need to change it. You need to change it. You need to bring it down. Bring it way down. Way down. Freedom is dangerous. Freedom is dangerous. Jesus never guaranteed our freedom. He never guaranteed our safety. In fact, He asked us to, be a, to sacrifice ourselves. So don't value freedom. Don't value it. Paul didn't. All right. I'm ready to get to my passage for today. Y'all ready? It's Matthew 13. Those are all bonus. Matthew 13, verses 44 to 46. It says this. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant 
in search of fine pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Kind of sounds like that comic book, doesn't it? It's just, he found this valuable comic book and he's willing to go out there and, and sell it. And, but this is uh, the kingdom of heaven. Talking about a treasure. Talking about pearls. These things that we, that we value, right? We value treasures. We value pearls. Value things like that. He says the kingdom of heaven is like those things. He says that when a man found and, and re, he, he found it, he, he quickly he reburied it. And in his joy, he went and sold everything that he has so that he could just buy that field. Buy that field so that he could have that treasure. Or the, the merchant that finds the pearls, he, he finds this one priceless pearl and he goes and sells everything he has so that he can buy this pearl. Most people read this as if the treasure and the pearl of great price is, is Jesus Himself. So most, most people think that, that they're talking about Jesus when they're talking about the treasure. They're talking about Jesus when they're talking about the pearl. The only problem is, is, that, is that you can't find Jesus. Okay, Jesus is not for you to be found. Jesus finds you. Jesus comes to you. Jesus cho chooses you. you. You don't choose Him. You don't find Him. He finds you. And so what if the treasure, what if the, the pearl in the parable is you? You know, we, we just talked about a while ago how you, you're, you're Jesus' number one value. You're the treasure. You're, you're, the, you're the priceless pearl. You're, you're, the Bible says you're His treasured possession. The Bible says that He sacrificed everything so that He could purchase you. We, we, we're bought with a price. We, we're purchased with the precious blood of, of Jesus Christ. We've all sang that song, right? And it's true. You're the treasure. You're, you're the pearl that Jesus laid down everything. He left everything. He left heaven. He gave up everything. So He could come down and He could purchase your pardon. Your forgiveness. Purchase your sins. Even though we didn't value Him, He still values us. Talk about value of the kingdom. What's keeping you from placing your highest value? on the kingdom of heaven? What's keeping you? Is it your possessions? Is it, is it somebody in your life? Is it your family? What's keeping you from making the kingdom of heaven? What's keeping you from making God number one value on your list? Maybe, maybe tonight you can go home and you can start making your list and, and find out and, and find out that maybe the kingdom of heaven is number five and how do you get it up there to number one? What do you have to do to raise it up there? And what will your, what will your life look like? What will the difference be in your life when you place the value of the kingdom of heaven above everything else in your life? And what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice in order to advance the kingdom of heaven? You see, we will, we will only advance the kingdom of heaven We'll only advance it when it's number one on our value system. Because we're going to advance what's number one. And we're only going to advance the kingdom of heaven when it's number one on our list. And so as we go further and deeper into this series and look at more and more about the kingdom of heaven and how it impacts our life and how we can apply it to our life, it's got to be number one. It's got to be our highest value. Because listen to this, we, we're not going to work on things. If, if, it's, if it's five, six, or seven down the list, we're not going to work on it. We're, we're, we're going to keep it down there. We're going to work on things that are number one. We're going to work on things that are number two. If, if my job's number one, I'm going to work harder. You know, we're going to work on things that are high up on our list. And so we've got to be able to put the kingdom of heaven up there on the list. 
And I close with this. Dads, just, just reminder to you, you are the value setter of your family. What you value, what you value, what's important to you, listen to me, is going to rub off on your kids. This is what they're going to value. If they see you at work all the time, they're, just, they're going to value work and they're going to grow up and work all the time. If you value stuff, possessions, then they're going to value stuff and possessions. They're going to have to have everything. But if you value the kingdom of heaven, if you value your relationship with God, so will they. So will they. They see it. They know it. But we can't pull the, the wool over their eyes. They, they know what we value. They know what's important to us. And so dads, I just challenge you with that. If it's valuable to you, it'll be valuable to them. If the kingdom of heaven is valuable to you, it'll be valuable to them. And listen to me. Take that to your workplace. If the kingdom of heaven is valuable to you in your workplace, it'll be valuable to those who work with you. Listen to me. The kingdom of heaven is attractive. Jesus had crowds everywhere He went. People couldn't get enough of Him. There was a sweet aroma coming out of Him. That's the kingdom of heaven. There's a sweet aroma that will come out of us. That will be attractive to everybody that we're with. But we've got to have the right value system. It's got to be number one on our value system. So do what you have to do. Make the decisions that you have to make. Make the sacrifices that you have to make to move it up to number one. If it's already there, praise God. You're, you're there. You're doing well. Keep it there. Keep it there. I just challenge you to think about that and to pray about that. And uh, we'll be all the better for it. I'll just ask you to stand. And maybe right now, the, the invitation, I, I'll, I'll be up here if you, need, if you need to come and pray. I'll stand up here and we can pray together. But uh, the invitation is this. Hey, answer those questions. Where is the kingdom of heaven on my value system? And just ask God. God, God He'll show you. He'll let you know. He let, the, he let the rich young ruler know. God, what do I have to do? He'll tell you. Thank you again for joining us for today's online service. If you have any prayer requests, any needs, or even just a comment about the message, you can leave that in the comment section below this video. Maybe you don't feel comfortable with leaving a comment. You can send a direct message to the Gathering's Facebook page. We hope that this message has blessed you and you have a good week.